Rolling Realms is a roll and write game published by Stonemaier Games and it is about Stonemaier Games. It is, it is about games published by the same publisher, so uh, if you like them, this could be of particular interest to you. And frankly, if you like uh, hobby board games, uh, this is one of the most interesting publishers that have been active in the last 10 years or so, so chances are you played at least some of these games. In Rolling Realms, we will be playing nine g mini games. There are three rounds, three mini games each round. At the end of each of each round, you score your mini games. You keep track of the score, and then at the end of the three rounds, you total all of your points, and the player with the most points wins the game. One to six players. So there is a solitaire variant in which you play the mini games in a specific order with some restrictions, and again, you go for points. And also it goes up to six players, which is not a problem because uh, gameplay is simultaneous, so you don't have analysis paralysis. I mean, it can always happen, but uh, it's not too bad because at least all the analytical paralysis players will be causing paralysis at the same time. The bulk, the heart of the game, is this set of decks of cards. They are uh, printed in dry erase cardboard or coated cardboard, whatever it is, but you'll be writing directly on them with a dry erase marker. So each player receives a deck. Each deck has two cards that are used to keep track of specific information, so you place them face up in front of you at the beginning of the game, then you shuffle the remaining 11 cards. These will generate the nine mini games that we are gonna play. Then a player, doesn't matter who, will draw three cards, reveal them, place them face up, and then everybody else uh, looks at the deck and extracts the same, the same card. So everybody will play in exactly the same mini games. Then we have these two super awesome, super large dice. Look how big they are, very satisfying. Everybody receives a marker and then you're, you're good to go. So a player, doesn't matter who, will roll the dice. That will produce the numbers that everybody will be using. Everybody will write those numbers here on the log card just to make sure that we have all the same numbers and we can check later if there is something that is uncertain. At the end of the nine round or the nine turns, we score round one, we clear everything but that uh, but that score, we play round two, we play round three, and then we get the total. We also have a card here that keeps track of the resources that we're gonna acquire during the game. In the game when you acquire a resource, say a pumpkin or a heart or three coins you will simply circle it, then you can um, use those resources and simply cross them out and you will use them to generate specific effects that are indicated here. I mean, the general idea is this, there are two numbers that you will place on two of your different cards. The numbers must be allocated to two different mini games, if possible at all. If you cannot allocate the two numbers to two different cards, then instead of allocating a number, you will gain a resource. But this is not the best way of gaining the resources. And so suppose, for example, that I decide here that I want to spend uh, the three here in between two cities. So I write one here, one here, then we repeat, resolve, and play again until everybody will have placed nine pairs of numbers. And again, then we go to the name, to the next one, for example, and so on and so forth. And actually, let me use these cards to exemplify some of the things that you can do. For example, the society. Uh, when you place your numbers, in our example, is three and five in the society. Uh, you can place them anywhere you anywhere you want, but each card must be each card value must be lower than the one directly above it. So you gotta uh, stack them that way with each card with the lower value than the one directly above it and then you gain a bonus when you complete a bonus in resources when you complete uh, a row at the end the card will score for each triangular set of cards in this configuration here and that's why you can have up to six because it's one two three four five plus one if you complete them all that would be six 
viticulture, you're gonna collect, squeeze wine and then uh, make or collect grapes and then make wine. When you place a number here, uh, you either gain a grape by outlining it, of course, use the corresponding number and that gives a resource right away, or the die that you use, you add it to the value of a grape that you already gained before and that fulfills one of the orders. And suppose I, that I had marked a five earlier, now I have a five and I decide to allocate that five to use that five and to make that wine, which will score me two points at the end of the game. Tapestry, I love the spatial puzzle because these numbers, when I allocate and then generate these shapes here, which I will cross out, I'm not cut and I need to keep it in the grid, uh, not to cover areas that are already uh, darkened. When I fill one of these squares entirely, these large squares, I collect the resource and at the end of the game I score a point for each uh, row or column of big squares. So again, it will be up to six points. And that's kind of the average, each card will give you five, six points usually. Uh, or six entirely, that, that's, that's the average. Uh, charter stone, you collect goods and then you ship them. My little side, you're gonna mark hexes around here and then you're gonna score po uh, collecting resources and then you're gonna score points per resource style for which you gain at least resources from all realms. Metal side is one of those uh, together with uh, between uh, two CDs that will score you car points based on what the other cards do. So for metal side, if you collect a lot of resources on all cards, you'll score well. This one, the score is equal to the lower score of the other two realms, that is of the other two cards it is together with but only up to the number of squares that you filled up here. So this is the general idea, I'm not gonna go through all the cards, but I think uh, I want to give you a sense of how well they turn some of their uh, flagship games into mini games. And in general, I have a real uh, good variety of gameplay based on the idea of placing only two dice. It's that minimalistic when it comes to the core, the core idea. And I think it works really well because these mini games, so the ultimate is right to numbers. They just work so differently. Uh, and in general, oh, wingspan, everybody loves wingspan, so I think you, you should see at least this one, which is you're creating birds, I guess. So you're filling out these groups in this order here, collecting resources every time you write a number and then scoring extra points if the total that you write in there matches the value of the bird. So they, I think they found that they, they were able to find a lot of a surprisingly high number of ways in which you can just place two numbers on these cards in these mini games, making it interesting. Uh, to me, probably that comes from uh, a balance that you had to find between the fact that you want to score, fulfill the requirements of the cards, but at the same time, also you will want to create uh, some synergies between cards when that is the case. You also want to collect resources that do not always score automatically, unless there's a card where you score thanks to the resources, but they allow you these resources to buy these advantages here that will allow you to break the rules and score in some other ways, not score necessarily, but uh, create good patterns such as pumpkins allow you to adjust the die, uh, three pumpkins to adjust the die and use it in a round that you already used to break in the rule that it has to be two different rounds. So, uh, the hearts will give you virtual dice, so you will add a third die, you, you know, based on the results, it's a virtual die, you don't really have a physical die to mark it, I only want the number. And here uh, the coins will also give you, it will also give you extra dice, virtual dice. So, uh, you want to get these things, but at the same time, uh, these do not carry over between rounds. That's another interesting mechanic here. At the end of the round, each resource that you collected but you didn't spend using advantages is worth zero one points. So that's why you will have scores such as you know be fourteen point two, 
uh, 11.9 at the end of a round. So that's an interesting mechanic because uh, people that come from our Eurogame uh, background, they will want to hoard, 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 and then those really are not worth much. And so you got to find the balance there to collect what you what you need. One at the same time, again, uh, fulfilling the, re the requirements of the mini games within a context of pushing your luck because the more rounds go by, well, the fewer your options are. That's when these resources become particularly important so you can wiggle a little bit with the last numbers. But again, you may find yourself in a situation where you collect all the resources and the last round simply don't give you the opportunity to to use them. So for a game this simple, which is literally roll two dice and add those two numbers somewhere on three cards, uh, I think this is remarkable. It's a remarkable game because it gets uh, your brain working, you get into that Euro gamey, uh, push your luck mindset very very well and very easily. I played the game with young players, those being my kids that are now 9 and 11, even the 9 year old could definitely get it. I mean the original idea, the basic idea, yes you could, a uh, 4 year old could get it. But then of course each mini game needs to be learned um, according to its own rules, but they are so simple that you can definitely play this with a, with a young crowd. My daughter Amelia who is 11 has been in me so many times. She's really, really good at this. So Rolling Realms, definitely something that will be particularly attractive for fans of the original games that are referenced in the game. But even if you never played any of those, the general idea of a game such as this one to me is very appealing because it's a game that sets up in like zero, <laughs> zero time, zero minutes, give each player a deck of cards and a marker and that's it, the game is set up. And you have enough variety there, uh, not just in the order in which the cards will come out, uh, but but the order will generate different synergies, especially again based on those cards that will interact with other cards. Maybe one thing is that, of course, each game you're going to use 9 out of the 11 cards, so yes, and there's going to be something reassuring the fact that oh, I already know the rules for these games, but maybe I would, like, uh, I would have liked or would like for the future a little more variety. After a while, uh, well, I just want more mini games. I like the idea very much and I hope that the idea can be expanded. Um, well, to things I, I, other other than Stonemaier games, otherwise we had to wait until, I don't know, 11 more games are published because, before we can have an expansion or something like that. You know, I, I hope they open up the idea to different themes, different topics, because the idea is very solid, it is implemented well, and make and that general idea and its implementation make Rolling Realms a really fun game.